Let's go. Let's roll. Uh huh. I'm about to take you there. Lightning like Steve McQueen I'm in the fast lane when the light turns green And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit Cause I made rugged blood, sweat and spit Yeah, like a horse I fly Gonna push yourself in for a bumpy ride I like to play hard, but I work harder And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger I was born to run I was built to last I was made for speed Cause I was born fast Gate like a bucking bull, got my horns up, I'm unstoppable. Got you spin around, it's a dosy do And I hold on tight like a rodeo. If you wanna get down, get yourself elevated up off the ground. Then come along with me to the nitty and the gritty of the country. I was cut from steel. Hey everybody, welcome back to another 395 Junkie video. Uh, Daniel here, and Tish is by my side. And we are en route on another trip. Where are we going, Dolph? Arizona. Arizona. To and what should be warmer weather, but we're not going to be in warmer weather. No, we won't be in warmer weather. We are going to, we have a couple stops in mind. First stop is uh, uh, we're going to meet some friends, Mickey and Josh from uh, Middle Landers. Uh, you can find them on Instagram. They live out here in Arizona. and. We are headed to the Mogollon Rim, which we've heard over the years. We've never actually set aside any time to go visit it, but we're going to be at elevation. We're going to be at about, uh, I don't know, like six, 7,000 foot in elevation. So it's going to be a little chilly at night and in the mornings. We're going to spend three nights, two to three nights on the Mogollon Rim before we hit up Montezuma's Castle on the way home and we will be back home on tuesday or wednesday just before thanksgiving so so there we were traveling east on highway 10 and it didn't take long for tish and i to realize what a different landscape it was compared to what we were used to as much as we love the mountains and being up the highway 395 the open desert crossing the colorado river and driving by all the cactuses or is it cacti I don't know, but before you knew it, we were crossing state line, and from there, things only got more and more pretty. Made it into the, actually we made it through the greater Phoenix area. We're in, what city right now? Scottsdale. Scottsdale, and we're about 90 miles from Payson, and from there, it's probably another hour, hour and a half to camp, so... Uh, should be nice. The weather cleared up really good. We're afraid we're going to get some rain uh, at least tonight, but it's already starting to clear up. So, uh, Thank goodness. should be cold, but I can take the cold. We just don't like the wet. Yeah. We, just don't, we don't like the rain and we don't like the wet. W word. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. All right, guys. So once we made it through the greater Phoenix area, we continued our travels north on I-17 and continued to just really appreciate the beauty of the landscape, the cactus, the clouds, the rock formations uh, along the way. And it didn't take long before we realized we weren't in the desert anymore. Temperatures started dropping, pine trees started popping up, and the next thing you know, we're in a small town called Pine, Arizona. And this is just one of several towns along this stretch that we really enjoy driving through. And next thing you knew, we were just about to get there. All right, guys. So we uh, made it through the town of Pine and Strawberry and 
now I think we're gonna be making a right turn up here on left. A, a right. Left. A right. I think we're making a right. A left will take you to Camp Verde, which is the way we're gonna get out of here to go visit Montezuma's castle. Um, but it's uh, about 53 degrees right now. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. And we are climbing. And we are climbing. We're at s almost 7,000 foot elevation. And we're making our way there, guys. We should be at camp in the next, uh, I don't know, hour or so, if not sooner. I think we're gonna be hitting dirt pretty quick. So once we hit dirt, we will show you guys where we're at and see if we can see some wild animals. Anything to add here? <laughs> That's all for now. Alright guys, so we're just making our way along this trail that goes along this uh, Mogion Rim and uh, we're just, uh, we're not camping here, but we just stopped at a random campsite to kind of check it out and I'll have Mama Goose mark it down as a waypoint, um, but check this out. Killer views, right? Probably get a little windy here at night, but it's to be expected when you're on a rim like this, um, but real pretty. And it smells, how good does it smell up here, dear? Oh, it smells amazing. Yeah. So should we uh, go in one at a time, or is it big enough that we can get Eric set up? There's plenty of room to turn around down here. Lunch. So we can spot out where you guys want to set up. There's one down here that would be a little cozy, but there's bigger ones back behind us. All right, guys, so uh, after about, I don't know, 10 hours of driving or so, which wasn't bad because we had we took a lot of stops and uh, we took it easy all the way up here, but we have made it to campsite number one tonight. And uh, we are not quite on the Mogollon Rim. Uh, we went inland just a little bit so that we wouldn't get that breeze if the wind starts picking up, but Mama Goose is getting the tent and everything all set up. And this is our view. And it's fantastic. And uh, there is absolutely no cell service up here, but I did just get a hold of our daughters to check in on everybody because I got a new toy. Well, Belle got a new toy. It wasn't new to us. We had it already, but I brought the Starlink up with us. And the idea of bringing a Starlink with me kind of defeated the purpose because, you know, a lot of times we like to get out here and just get away. But uh, for the purposes of why we do bring it with us to stay in touch with our girls when we're out on adventures, it is perfect. So as you can see, Jerry helped me build the mount that goes on top of the roof rack. And as long as you're facing north, you got all the cell service you want. You can make cell phone calls and, you know, God forbid an emergency happens, you have access to the outside world. So uh, we're going to get camp all set up uh we'll get dinner on here in just a little bit josh and mickey which is middle landers on instagram 
uh, they're kind enough to not only uh, take us to this amazing site, they're going to be cooking dinner tonight. So. everybody mogi on rim did not disappoint uh we are as usual going to be shifting our plans a little bit because uh, we might be getting some rain up here this evening so while the skies are still kind of partly cloudy everybody's getting their stuff put together and we're going to run into a little mountainside town and have some breakfast and just uh enjoy the rest of our time with mickey and josh before uh they uh, head off back to home. They can only do one night with us. And then uh, Eric and I, we're going to be headed over to a campsite near Camp Verde. We're going to sit here, enjoy our coffee by the fire, and enjoy this view behind me. And we'll catch up with you guys on the trail. <laughs> All right, guys. Just a quick little commercial break to talk about 395 Jerky. 395 Jerky is a craft beef jerky company that I started a couple years ago and it has been well received by a lot of my subscribers and a lot of customers. In fact, if you go to 395junkie.com, click on the products and you'll see a ton of reviews, all of them being really, really good five-star reviews. And we're biased, of course, but everything we hear from everybody is that it's really good stuff, so I'd encourage you to try it. Um, but we're also here to give an announcement uh, for the longest time. We've only had five flavors uh, We did just recently come out with a six flavor dear. Why don't you tell them what uh, what it is? So our brand new flavor is called fire hot. We've had so many customers ask what's the hottest and um, That has always been our thick and zesty, which isn't really hot, but more spicy. Yes, so um just a reminder guys we offer two different sizes five ounce bags ten ounce bags um and the five, the six flavors are fire hot classic teriyaki honey pepper pepper thick and zesty and thick and sweet and if you go on the website you guys can see the ingredients of all of them in a brief little description and if you spend more than fifty dollars on my website it's all free shipping so with the holidays right around the corner it could be a great uh christmas gift so um we're gonna get back to this video, but just wanted to uh, give you guys a quick update on the newest flavor. Happy trails. And just like that, everybody had all their stuff packed up and we hit the trail. It didn't take us long to get out of our campsite and onto the main trail, but with all the rain that we got the night before, it sure made for a muddy mess. Mud was flinging all over the place and we were slipping and sliding. And wouldn't you know it, we got out of there just in time because the clouds moved in, it started raining, and we even had bits of hail falling off of us and bouncing off of the hood. But overall, these roads were, were really easy. They're all logging roads, and honestly, you probably don't even need a four-wheel drive to get in there, but it's always recommended to have it. So we hit the pavement, we continued to get into Camp Verde, and it was a sure pretty drive, but the rain continued almost for the first hour or so until we got closer. All right, so no. that didn't work. <laughs> Guys, believe it or not, Mama Goose does her hair every once in a while. Um, she just, she oh. just doesn't wake up looking as fantastic as she oh does. So this is like 
the real deal right here. She's no. thrilled with me right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, breaking news. The place that we went to in Happy Jack was a little town over here by uh, Mogi on Rim. The restaurant was closed, which is a bummer. So now we're driving into Camp Verde, which is where we're going to be camping near tonight. Um, and we'll try to eat something there. Hopefully they're open there. But this is typical, not, guys. We're going to have to resort to the food we brought. <laughs> well, yeah, God forbid. That'd just be crazy <laughs> if we just went to camp and cooked. Uh, but uh, that's the latest and greatest. And uh, what else you got? Nothing. At this point, we're just figuring things out as we go. Yeah, this this went from an overlanding trip to a road trip real quick. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll catch up with you guys just a little bit. guys so it is sunday night and we made it to our new campsite and josh and mickey had to hit the road because they got to work tomorrow and we're so appreciative of them showing us around and they put us on this campsite here we are near camp verde arizona we're right along the verde river and it's beautiful it's peaceful it's really nice you got all these fall colors around us and to make things even better uh 395 junkie gets another night off tonight of cooking as you can see behind me here, Eric is putting together something, and we're going to go check it out and let us know what he's cooking. So let's go for a walk. Hey, buddy. What's happening? What you cooking? This is uh, Mom's homemade chicken soup. It's a family recipe. Yeah, Very and cool. We're going to have full bellies tonight. Well, from this angle, it looks like you're at home. I am. But you're not at home because at home. you are in your... I'm in my mobile home. Your, your mobile home. This <laughs> off-road trailer has just been tearing up the trails on this trip, and their rig is absolutely beautiful. On 40s, Dana 70s, diesel. The thing's just a beast, so... And Mama Juice is relaxing. What you drinking there, doll? 
poor man's michelada. <laughs> oh, I did not. I did not want a phone line. I want a camper. Little mini hotel. Almost done, All, right. All right. Well, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Bev. This is amazing. Uh, it smells delicious. It smells good. He made some egg rolls, which no. he lumpia, 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 which he made um, at the house. He prepped it all there and then uh, yeah. uh, fried them here, which is also amazing. So thank you very much. You're so welcome. You want let's... to talk about that? Well, it's something that mom showed me the recipe when I was 37, and I've been making it ever <laughs> since. I've been cooking since I was a little boy. Mom taught me how to cook, and I'm glad I did. So. I hope you guys enjoyed the food. Oh, yeah, they were delicious. They were very good. There's only good. two yeah. left. Daniel gets the last two. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to dig into this and see how it tastes. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. without further ado, mm -hmm. without burning my mouth, oh, because yeah. it is it's nice and super hot. hot. It's really so good. good. So, we're going to just enjoy our dinner here. We're going to have a nice, uh, quiet evening and probably. Uh, Maybe get to bed a little earlier than we did last night. <laughs> and we will catch up with you guys first thing in the morning. And got a lot more to show you. Have a good night. Night. You're going to want your sweatshirt, yes, to put over here. You a new one. Try to run everything, right, Daniel? Yep. Right, there you go, buddy. You might want to give it a minute a little, or two. Help yourself. Look at that, dude. Help yourself. What's the twisty ones? Like a sugar? Like a cinnamon sugar? Those are my favorite. You've, picked, you've chosen wisely. Mm. All right, guys. Good morning. It is Monday morning, and I apologize for the noise in the background. That's a hair dryer going right now. Tish is busy taking a shower in the Nemo using the hot water from the trailer from Eric and Bev. They offered us uh, to use their shower, which I showered up this morning and it felt great. So just having some uh, morning coffee and some uh, Mexican sweet bread. And uh, we're going to get things wrapped up here in a little bit. I'll tell you, this is a, we're really spoiling ourselves this trip between everybody cooking dinner for us. Uh, tonight's our night for dinner, but uh, sharing dinners really makes it a lot easier. So if you guys are going out with a group, Plan on doing uh, group dinners because it just saves you how much room uh, uh, you, you're not going to have in your fridge. You know, you only need to bring a third of what you would normally do. You have to double up or triple up on the recipes, of course, but uh, it really makes for an enjoyable evening knowing only one person's cooking while everybody else can kind of relax. So, and we'll catch up with you guys in just a little bit. I'm going to tear it all down. You want to buffer them down? Especially if you can get it hooked up over at the WCF. Yeah. Yeah. We are headed out of here. It's about 11 o'clock on Monday afternoon, and next stop is Montezuma's Castle. Montezuma's Castle. Mama Goose is gonna relive her childhood youth. <laughs> she hasn't been there. I've never been there. She hasn't been there in a long I time. She's probably 10 or 12 years old. But I think it's probably about an hour to get out of here, and then 30 minutes on the highway, and then uh, we'll uh, catch up with you guys once uh, we get to Montezuma's Castle, and we'll show you how great it is. All right, guys, so we just arrived to Montezuma's Castle. State Park? National Monument. National Monument. Something tells me it's worth stopping at. So we're going to get a bunch of video and uh, save you guys a $10 a person to see it. Right. So did you have fun, dear? Yes. 
Did you get a chance to relive your childhood? <laughs> yes. No, you didn't. But. Because we didn't get to walk through anything. There, my memory is a little off. <laughs> yeah. She so, remembers. Yeah, I remember being able to walk through, like, tour through the living area of some ruins, and it was not Montezuma's Castle. <laughs> no, it might have been Tuzigut. <laughs> might have been. So we talked to uh, one of the... Park rangers. Yeah, the rangers at the National Monument, and he said that they used to tour Montezuma's back in the 50s, and I might be remembering Tuzigut because they still do tours, so now we have to come back. Now we do, so, but today, as of right now, we are headed back into Camp Verde. We're gonna grab a bite to eat. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Is that better, guys? Yeah. Um, so, now we're gonna head into Camp Verde, grab a bite to eat, and make a beeline to Quartzsite, and hopefully find camp sometime right around sunset. All right, guys, so we are in Tonopah, Arizona, which if you don't know where that's at, it's just east of Quartzsite by oh, about that, an hour. That big mountain. And Mama Goose is doing what she does best, and <laughs> we've been driving for the last three hours or so, and we're kind of getting sick of driving. I know Eric and Bev's pups have been in the Jeep all day. They're anxious to get work straight. I know they're anxious to get to camp, so we're just gonna camp here instead of Quartzsite, which is really just a difference of an hour. Either way, we'll be home way earlier than we expected tomorrow. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys at camp, and hopefully it's light enough, we can show you guys where we landed, which don't expect anything spectacular. We're just looking for a place to, you know, lay our head down tonight, so see you soon. All right, guys, so Mama Goose strikes again. I mean, she had, as if you think that this was just an accident, she's got a knack for this. But here she found this gorgeous campsite with uh, right at the base of these little uh, hills or mountains right next to this cactus and already got a fire pit. So it's starting to get dark. Hopefully you guys can see, but uh, we're just going to get set up, enjoy the last bits of sunlight and uh, we'll be cooking dinner here in no time. All right, guys, so we got all set up. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is we are making, it's our turn to cook dinner. So... I'm gonna be making some sopes with uh, some refried beans, some uh, shredded beef, which I prepared at the house. Um, got about, uh, I don't know, two pounds, three pounds worth of shredded beef, which it's difficult to make this out on the trail and actually makes it that much easier when you are on the trail because all you have to do is warm it up on the scottle. We got some sopes here. These are just like a, a masa, like a tortilla, but, but it's made out of masa and it's uh, shaped kind of like a bowl. So we're gonna fry these up a little bit, put the shredded beef on there, some lettuce, some cotija cheese, uh, some salsa that I got from El Torito Meat Market, which is amazing. It's their salsa habanera. And uh, of course, we'll put some refried beans on top of it, so either guacamole or avocado, and a little bit of cilantro, some Roma tomatoes, and some crema. So. We're gonna take our time cooking tonight. Like I said, we just uh, ate not even three hours ago, so not nobody's really that hungry, but I got a lot of prep work, so I'm gonna get going on all this and enjoy a cold, nice adult beverage. Want some taquin with that? Yeah? Yes, please. All right guys, so we're just preparing. Obviously we got all the veggies and uh, the avocado, everything's all cut up, ready to go for the fixings on it. So we're gonna set that aside. What we're doing, we got the cotija cheese right here, which I'll sprinkle on top. And what we're doing is we're mixing uh, refried beans with, uh, with pinto beans to give it a little bit more uh, uh, texture to it instead of just a big old stiff thing of mud on your plate. So we're gonna warm this up. I got the oil already in this pan here which we're just going to lightly fry to warm up the sopas and once we warm up the shredded beef put it all together and magic so all 
All right, guys, we are ready to cook. I've got the beans pretty much all warmed up. I got the oil. I don't have a whole lot in there, just enough to kind of get to the bottom and warm it up. And I got the uh, shredded beef pretty much all warmed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, frying the sofas just to warm them up a little bit in some vegetable oil. And uh, we'll be eating in no time. All right, guys, and you don't wanna burn the sofas. You just want to get the bottoms of them kind of brown so that they're nice and warm when you serve your guests. Put the shredded beef on top of the sofas and give it to your guests and let them uh, put all the fixings on it and sit by uh, the campfire and uh, enjoy. So I'm going to finish serving these up and we'll meet you guys over on our chairs and let you know how they taste. So, uh, sopes are done. Uh, why don't you guys dig in and let the crowd know <laughs> how it tastes. Come on, dear. You can do it. We're all family here. I want to make a mess. Oh, my God. That's two thumbs up. Oh. What do you think, doll? All That's right. Good. Oh. They're heavy. I think I might have packed them too full. Yeah, there's some weight to these. For sure. oh. Oh. <laughs> too excited, huh? I shaped the salt paper. Yeah, at least you shaped it. Oh, that's great. All right, guys, we're going to finish stuffing our faces and save everybody the embarrassment. And <laughs> then we're going to light a fire and probably call it a night. And we will see you guys first thing in the morning. Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell but Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hill flowers grow Well he met in the springtime The sun sang low Two star-crossed lovers In the still melting snow Where the loving was easy And the courting was brief there well, they called her a beauty They called him a thief In the quiet of the evening They'd steal away Where the laughter would flow And the fiddle would play Where well, the folks called it wrong but hell, it seemed all right In the sun-painted picture And the day turned to night Come up on the hillside We'll have a time You'll bring the kisses, honey I'll bring the wine Keep your heart guarded Or too soon it'll fall When one walks back home, honey Only one knows it all Well, she walked up the hillside Long one day And the heart is a hunter Always knows of its prey And her father's old pistol Hanging loose by her side When she aimed once She never shot twice Well, the air was so still And the sky was so blue 
before she could see them The laughter she knew She heard two shots ring out Down in the town There was three on the hillside But only one headed down all right guys well we are off the trail and on the highway we are headed home it was a fantastic four days dear what you think of arizona oh, oh my gosh it was so pretty so many different like regions that we went to in these four days um with the fluctuation of temperatures and everything but every spot was beautiful we were yep. on water we were on a cliffside we were in the desert it was great yeah, we had a really good time. Um, our next trip isn't going to be until the day after Christmas, guys. We're going to go do some winter camping somewhere, which will probably include some snow somewhere. Maybe. Maybe, most Maybe likely. Not. It makes for some really pretty uh, uh, adventures. <laughs> Although cold, but we don't mind that so much. No, snow camping is fun. It's clean. <laughs> yeah, but... No dust and dirt. That about wraps it up, guys, for this trip. Um, just a quick reminder, if you go over to 395junkie.com, and there's all kinds of items over there that you can pick up for your special someone for Christmas. We do custom t-shirts. Um, ready-made t-shirts. Ready-made t-shirts. We've got, of course, uh, our craft beef jerky, which would make for some great Christmas presents as well. And now we have six flavors to choose from. Yes, we do. So. Uh, Lots to choose from, guys, and all of that just uh, supports the channel. Uh, we really appreciate it, and if you're not all, already a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button on this video, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on our next adventure. But until then, guys, happy trails.